So what's creating the problem here for us is the nine. Okay, I cannot have that nine there. All right, now you're gonna go through and divide every term by nine, because if I do the same thing to both the left side and the right hand side of the equation, all right, I have a balanced equation. So I wanna get rid of nine. So nine divided by nine is one. So I'm gonna divide through by nine. So I'm gonna divide this term by nine. I'm gonna divide this term by nine, this term by nine, and this term by nine. I divided everything by nine. Nine divided by nine, which is what we want for that leading coefficient, okay, to become one. So that's an x squared. Now, what I might do to save some steps here, this would be six over nine, right? Six over nine reduces to what? Divide by three, divide by three, two thirds. So why don't we go ahead and make this a two thirds? So two thirds x. All right, four ninths does not reduce. And then zero divided by nine does zero. So I still have an equation set equal to zero. Okay, so get rid of that coefficient. All right, now, first step then was to take whatever number is right here and move it to the other side. So I'm going to add four nines to both sides, add four nines to both sides. We gotta love fractions at this point, okay? Now, I lined everything up. I kept everything exactly lined up. All right, so then I'm gonna keep the x squared here minus two thirds X, all right? I'm gonna leave this all blank right now. That equal sign, I'm gonna bring straight down, zero plus four ninths puts four ninths here. That automatically creates me a spot right there. So if you need to draw in the blank lines, you can draw in the blank lines. Okay, now again, I need to make this a perfect square trinomial. Now, the only thing is we did not deal with perfect square trinomials having fractions in there. And this is why people don't like this method, right? Because once you start getting fractions in there, it's not as easy to recognize. But what do we have to do with this number? We have to take half the number and then square it, okay? So I'm gonna show it over here. I need to take one half of two thirds of means to multiply. I need one half of two thirds and then I need to square it because that's what we did in the first example. We took this number, we took half of it, and then we squared it. We just could do it in our head. All right, the word of means to multiply. So one half times two thirds, that's just a one third, right? Okay, twos cross out. So a one third squared, square the top number, square the bottom number. I'm gonna have a one ninth. All right, so that's the part that people don't like because it's all fractions. But my number, my magic number right here to make this a perfect square trinomial is a plus one ninth. If I do plus one ninth over here, I'm gonna do plus one ninth over here. All right, I now have a perfect square trinomial as yucky as that looks, okay? Now, what? how did we factor this? We took the square root of this, we took the square root of this, all right, so the square root of x squared is x. Square root of one ninth would be one third. Okay, if not, the answer is right there. When we took same thing, one third, that's square root there. This sign comes down and I throw in the squared. So that's how we factor a perfect square trinomial. Most of you can add more, uh, four ninths and one ninth in your head. That's just going to give us a nice little five ninths over there. Okay, then I'm going to take square root of both sides. All right, because now I'm just down to solving this. So let's go to a different color. I don't want to mix this up. So square root of this side plus or minus square root of this side. Now, since we've got that first one done and we know what we're doing here, I'm going to write this as an x minus a one third equals plus or minus square root of five ninths. Can I simplify square root of five ninths? Bottom's a perfect square. I'll do it over here. So we don't have to clutter this up over here. Square root of five ninths, I can break it up into a little radical on top, a little radical on the bottom. That'll give me square root of five over three. So this does simplify to square root of five over three. So let's go ahead and put that in. 
plus or minus square root of five over three. All right, then at this point, all I got to do is add one third to both sides. So x equals a one third plus or minus square root of five over three. If I was writing that by hand, I would probably stop at that point in time. All right, however, you might possibly, especially in my math lab, you might see this. Are these not two fractions with common denominators already? So I could add the numerators, right? So really, that's the same thing as 1 plus or minus the square root of 5 all over 3. These two answers are equivalent. Okay. Now, stop and think about this. If we can start with a quadratic and solve it in a variety of different ways, all right, we can factor it. We can use square root principle. This was completing the square, but the other method, which we haven't done in this class, but I know you've done it before, is the quadratic formula. Doesn't this look like an answer that you would have gotten if you had done the quadratic formula? And it better be, right? I better be able to take this quadratic, do the quadratic formula, and get the exact same answer because it's the same equation. All right. But this is just completing the square. 